It is now time for members' statements. The member from Nipissing. Thank you, uh, Speaker. The uh, <clears throat> lockout of uniform workers at Ontario North End is now in its fourth week with no end in sight. A community rally is being organized this weekend with the national heads of both Unifor and the Canadian Labour Congress planning to attend, which is an indication of the severity of this impasse. I wrote to the Premier last month asking her to personally intervene to help move the parties closer to a resolution. Uh, not only is there no evidence she's done this, she has not responded to my letter, which, quite frankly, is unacceptable. We'd hoped that after the Auditor General exposed the government's faulty math on the ONT fire sale, that they would provide some certainty in northeastern Ontario surrounding the future. Uh, but this lockout has provided only more uncertainty. The union has asked for mediation or arbitration three times, but the government has refused. The Premier doesn't need to pass this legislation. She just needs to agree to send it uh, all the unresolved items to binding arbitration under Section 79 of the Canada Labour Code. So, as the holidays approach, I ask in good faith that the Premier, Ministers of Labour and Northern Development Mines to step in personally and move this dispute closer to resolution for the sake of our communities in northeastern Ontario. Here, here. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. For anyone who thinks the 401 digital corridor stops at Waterloo, think again. As MPP for London West, I am proud to share some of the significant milestones achieved by London's thriving tech cluster over the last year. Last month, two local firms were named to the 2015 Deloitte Technology Fast 50 list, an elite ranking that celebrates leadership, innovation, and excellence among the 50 fastest growing tech companies in Canada. Digital Digital Extremes, one of the world's top gaming development studios, and Big Blue Bubble, Canada's largest mobile, independent mobile gaming company, earned the ranking by reporting revenue growth, growth of more than 300 per cent over the last four years. 2015 also saw the launch of Fanshawe College's new three-year video game design and development program, which combines programming and coding with the artistic and creative aspects of game development. Talent is one of the most critical drivers of growth in the tech sector, and this new program will provide the talent pipeline necessary to feed London's growing digital hub. Two other London tech firms made international headlines in 2015. Race Roster and Voices.com were two of just five Canadian companies accepted into the Canadian Technology Accelerator in New York, a program to help high-growth Canadian firms gain market traction in the U.S. Speaker, we need to ensure the right government policies and programs are in place to support the continued growth and success of these companies. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Mississauga Streetsville. Thank you very much, Speaker. Christmas time in all our communities is a special time to offer thanks for the year we're finishing. To my neighbours, friends and associates in Lisgar, Meadowvale and Streetsville, Andrea and I hope you are celebrating a year of good health and progress in careers, studies and family life. Our reminder to our friends each year is to reach out to those who may be alone or who may need a friend during Christmas time. Remember our food banks, the Eden Food Bank, the Save a Food Bank, and the Mississauga Food Bank. Help them help other households with a food or cash donation to bring Christmas joy where it might otherwise be just another tough day. Merry Christmas to the Streetsville BIA, the Lisgar Residents Association, and to the Credit Valley AM, Meadowvale, and Streetsville Rotary Clubs. Merry Christmas to all who serve us at the Peel District and Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Boards, to the officers at the Meadowvale and Streetsville local offices of the Peel Regional Police, and to the firefighters in the Meadowvale and at the Gary Morden stations. Our warm Christmas greetings to the doctors, nurses, staff, administration, and volunteers at Trillium Health Partners, and to those who ride with me on the My Way bus and to the Milton Go Line. Andrea and I, and our cat Bebe, join with my constituency and Queen's Park staff, Andre, Magnolia, Monica and Manraj, to wish one and all in Lisgar, Meadowvale and Streetsville a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Lampton, Kent Middlesex. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased today to congratulate Lambton Conveyor on 50 years in business. It wow. has been family-owned since 1965 and today is Canada's leading manufacturer of grain storage, handling and conditioning systems.
Productions. Lambton Conveyor is operated by Mr. Ray Morehouse of Florence, Ontario, who was recently inducted into the Lambton Agricultural Hall of Fame. This was a well-deserved recognition for his accomplishments in business and his service to agriculture. In 1965, Ray started Stormore Limited at the family farm to supply and install on-farm grain handling, drying and storage systems. This allowed farmers to dry and store grain at their own operations, allowing them independence in marketing and processing their product. Stormore grew into the highly successful business, now operating as Lampton Conveyor located in Wallaceburg. Starting from a small barn servicing local producers, Ray Morehouse and Lampton Conveyor now market their grain handling systems to farming operations all over the world. Wow. Ray Morehouse has been an innovator. In the 1970s, he made experiments in crop row width, which, provide, which proved highly beneficial. In the following decade, Ray experimented with biofuels to dry grain. Despite having international manufacturing facilities and a global network of field representatives, Lampton Conveyor continues to value its close, personal connections with customers and associates both at home and around the world. On behalf of the Legislature, I'd like to congratulate Ray Morehouse, his family and the team at Lampton Conveyor. Thank you. Further members, here's the member from Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. Soon, northern nerves will be skiing, snowmobiling, trapping, snowshoeing, traveling through the bush over the frozen lakes. We want to know that there is a, an infrastructure in place if an accident was to happen and that lives will be protected. Since the announcement that the search and rescue helicopter at the Sudbury Airport was being redeployed to Aurelia, have been asking, I have been asking questions, Speaker. The minister never answered my question, but stated they are currently reviewing the report developed by the OPP on search and rescue in Northern Ontario. The report, Speaker, well, let me tell you, you'll remember that after the community outcry that this helicopter would better protect the people of the North by being uh, in Sudbury rather than Aurelia, the government promised to do a review of the decision. Apparently, a report from that review has been tabled with the minister. Let me tell you about that report, Speaker. I have filed a Freedom of Information request for that report and got nothing. I repeatedly requested a copy directly from the minister and got nothing. I have approached the OPP headquarters, Aviation Base and Media Department, and got nothing. I have requested a briefing from the ministry on this report and got nothing. I have requested who has worked on this report, and we can't identify a single person. At this point, Speaker, I believe that the review of this decision to move the Sudbury helicopter to Aurelia never took place. Let me be clear. Northerners want their helicopter back. Thank you. <laughs> Further the member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This past weekend, in my riding of Kitchener Centre, KW Habilitation held its first annual Christmas Bazaar, and it was a huge success. And you heard me asking a question this morning to our Minister of Community and Social Services about this. There were over 30 vendors featuring local art, crafts, baked goods, and a raffle with proceeds going to KW Habilitation's programs and activities. A special thank you should be given to the Executive Director, Ann Bilodeau, and her wonderful staff who pulled this inaugural event together. KW Habilitation is a local not-for-profit organization that started with a group of concerned parents and has now expanded to over 500 employees, serving over 1,000 people and their families. The organization provides a wide range of services and supports to thousands of children and adults with developmental disabilities. I do want to commend the Ministry of Community and Social Services, which funds 80 per cent of KW Habilitation's operating budget. With this support, the organization is able to assist with creating a level of independence by teaching life skills through early learning and child care programs family resources, and continued supports through life's transitions. They're in a three-story building, which opened just last year. It was made possible with $3.5 million from the province. Mr. Speaker, this organization is an important resource in my community, fostering inclusivity. Thank you. Thank you. For the number of statements. Point of order from uh, the member from Ladder Crown, Atlantic and Addington, uh, before his statement. Speaker, Speaker, uh, I seek unanimous consent from this House to wear a shirt that promotes uh, quitting smoking and promotes better 
health and saving lives in Ontario. Uh, the, the, member, the member is seeking unanimous consent to wear a, a, a T-shirt that I'm aware he's wearing. But before I do that, I will acknowledge to the member that you need to get permission through a unanimous consent before you wear the item, and that if you were pointed out by the sergeant at arms you're not supposed to wear it, you can't wear it until you get the unanimous consent. And that goes for buttons and ribbons and anything in the house. Yep, excuse me. You better be. So I, I'm not admonishing the member, I'm explaining the member the process. And now I will ask for that unanimous consent to wear the T-shirt that you're wearing. The member is seeking unanimous consent to wear a T-shirt. Do we agree? Agreed. The member for his statement. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, late last month, this government rolled out regulations related to the consumption of marijuana. Included with that regulation and the following comments was an, an acknowledgement from the Associate Health Minister that there is no scientific evidence that secondhand marijuana vapor produced from an electronic cigarette has any health effects on bystanders. In addition, she also said the law allows for an exemption because someone needs it for med medical purposes. It's all about negotiating, it's about balancing the rights, and this is in stark contrast with what this Liberal government was saying in regards to vaping well, we had discussions on Bill 45, and well, Bill 45 was passed at third reading. Why this government has been so steadfast against a harm reduction method that is proven to work against one of the greatest public health issues is perplexing. Just this week, our counterparts across the Atlantic Ocean, in the Wales Parliament and the UK National Parliament, have now repealed their extensive bans on vaporizers in the Welsh Parliament and the UK Parliament National Health System has now determined that personal vaporizers will be used as and allowed to be used as prescriptions to help people to quit smoking. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from the Tobacco Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, when I think of the people who shape the quality of life in my community in Etobicoke Centre, I often think of the people who volunteer their time every day to make our community even better. Today, I rise in the House to recognize the important contributions of a group of people who are doing just that, the Glen Agar Residents Association. The association, which is known as GARA, formed last year, and shortly after formation, I had a pleasure of meeting with their board and working with them in support of their efforts on behalf of the community. I must applaud GARA for their professionalism and constructive approach to tackling the challenges facing the community. The issue at the forefront is the proposed redevelopment of 19 Glen Agar, formerly Kipling Grove Public School. The association and residents are concerned that the proposed development will lead to excessive traffic, declining road safety, overtaxed sewer system, loss of green space and parking, and the devaluation of properties. Ultimately, Speaker, they are concerned that the proposed development could negatively impact the quality of life in their community, and I agree with them. Recently, Councillor Stephen Holliday hosted a community consultation with residents, city planners, and the developer. It was attended by over 200 residents, Speaker. And during the meeting, Garo made a very professional presentation along with residents and raised these concerns very effectively. I was pleased to speak at the meeting to support Gara, echo their concerns, echo their opposition to the proposed development, and urge the developer to amend the application to ensure that any development preserves the character and quality of life in the community, and I do so again here today. Glen Agar is a beautiful community, and I'm proud to represent it. I'm also proud and would like to thank the Glen Agar Residents Association, its board and members, for their work to make our community, to make Etobicoke Centre, even better. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Ottawa, Orléans. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you. Pleasure of visiting one of the manufacturing facilities of Esther Lauder in Markham. Esther Lauder owns 18 cosmetic and personal care brands worldwide, none of which use microbeads. There is a positive financial impact in the region. And I was very proud to learn that many products are built here, are made here in Ontario. Many things in its Canadian operations. They make changes to their production line based on ideas from the worker rather than management employing a bottom up model. The facility also has an excellent record on safety, surpassing industry standards. It was a pleasure for me to talk to the employees. They have told me how 
proud they were to work with those excellency standards. The Bentley facility is passionate about ensuring safety in his workplace. He expresses this passion by writing poems about safety, which are shared with the entire production facility over the PA system every Monday and Friday. He gained recognition within the company and even published a book of his poem. I would like to end by reading one of John's poems. Being determined in our ways, put safety ahead of the race to accomplish our task and at a better phase and make this world a better place. Merci, Monsieur better Président. Point. Thank Merci. you. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's now time for...